If you've ever visited a natural history museum, you've probably seen timelines like this, or maybe branching ones like this, showing you the evolutionary chronology of familiar mammal species. And in most of these timelines, if you go all the way back to the beginning, you'll find a pint-sized version of a mammal you know today. This isn't a coincidence. Modern mammals originated from tiny species able to outlast the extinction event which wiped out the dinosaurs, and then grew in size and diversity over millions of years to fill out the ecological niches the dinosaurs left behind in their wake. As a result of this shared origin, looking at the first draft of mammals, so to speak, kind of feels like you're looking at someone's baby photos. And most of these miniature ancestors of the species we know today emerged during the same period, the Eocene period, a geological epoch which gets its name from Greek terms meaning New Dawn, an appropriate moniker considering the Eocene represented the dawn of modern mammals. So let's take a look at the tiny mammals who populated this period and better understand their connection to the mammals we know today. Beginning with the Moetherium, this extinct genus of rotund, stubby Eocene mammals is a distant relation to none other than mammoths and elephants. The size and body shape of these tiny animals make the Moetherium look more like a modern pig than an elephant, standing at only 70 centimeters or 2.3 feet high at the shoulder. The shape of their skulls suggests they didn't have fully formed trunks like a modern elephant either, but more of a stumpy upper lip for grasping aquatic vegetation. Although maybe an offshoot instead of a direct ancestor to modern elephants, it's still amusing to think that other species in this diminutive taxonomic order would one day become the largest land animals on the planet. Here's another genus from the early Eocene which looks quite different from its gigantic descendants. This is the Ambilodectus, the four-limbed ancestor of the modern whale. Their name means walking whales because scientists once believed they were amphibious and could walk on land as well as swim. Although most modern research suggests they were in fact fully aquatic, the concept of a sharp-toothed furry whale with legs is still pretty incredible. Most modern whale species actually have trace remnants of vestigial leg bones in their tails, however, from this early land to ocean transition period. Pretty interesting. What's also interesting is Ambilodectus as a predator might have preyed on some early genus of horses due to a temporal overlap. If this is indeed the case, the idea of a whale which ate horses is, well, quite jarring to say the least. Speaking of early horses, Hyracotherium is an extinct genus of small, odd-toed ungulates basal to the equid family, a taxonomic classification which eventually gave us the horse, as well as the donkey and the zebra. Although not technically equid themselves like they were once believed, Hyracotherium still have quite the evolutionary lineage, which is impressive considering just how tiny these species were. These proto-horses maxed out at 9 kilograms or 20 pounds, which is about the weight of a miniature schnauzer. Taking to the skies, we have Oniconectris, a creature from the early Eocene which looks alarming from fossils alone, but more familiar in recreations. That's right, it's the bat, or a more primitive taxonomic ancestor of the modern bats we're familiar with. Analysis of the bone structure suggests Oniconectris could already fly, and probably already echolocate. Indeed, compared to the other species, it seems early bats already had it all figured out, evolutionarily speaking. Up next is a Middle Eocene animal I felt I had to mention. The Androsarcus is an extinct genus which might have been the largest predatory mammal ever to walk the earth. Their three foot long wolf-like skull alone we've uncovered suggests an animal even larger than a modern grizzly bear. So what is this early mammal the ancestor of? Well, not much actually. Most scientists think the Androsarcus has no direct evolutionary lineage whatsoever, and was an offshoot which simply died out. Proving in biology as well as life, you can never tell who will succeed long term based on early signs of promise. Ending our adventure through first draft of mammals, we have the Omomayidae, a group of early primates with massive eyes, similar to the startling peepers on a modern day Tazier. So what are these perpetually shocked looking animals the ancestors of? You and I. Well, maybe. It's difficult to say for certain if Omomayidae are direct evolutionary ancestors of humans and other apes, but it's certainly possible based on the fossil record. If so, our ancestors weighed about 500 grams, or just over one pound. Pretty tiny. Despite this, they had some early versions of features you might recognize on yourself, like grasping hands with complex digits. 
It's difficult to know much else about these organisms due to the scattered nature of their remains, but if they are an early branch in our family tree, you might be looking at your evolutionary baby photo. To put it a certain way, and with that, our journey through the early versions of mammals you might recognize comes to an end. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two along the way. If you did, please consider subscribing and leaving this video a like. It costs nothing and would help me out a lot. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.